Hello friends. So today's uh, lecture is going to basically wind up on the topic of uh, fugue state that we started in the last class. In the last class, actually, we started with uh, the definition of fugacity, uh, starting from a pure, pure substance. But um, we did that in order to make the understanding of fugacity of a component as it exists in the mixture a little bit clearer and distinct from uh, that of a pure substance. So that is basically what we will be doing in uh, today's lecture. So if you uh, recall, in the previous uh, class, we started with um, the basic equation of thermodynamics for a multi-component system and uh, derived expressions for uh, the various properties as functions of uh, chemical potential. So in doing that, we actually derived a certain relationship from where we took off for uh, definition of fugacity. We'll go back to that right now. So that uh, the connections uh, start becoming clear. So let me go to the whiteboard. So if you go back to this expression that we had uh, derived in the last class, uh, so starting from dg is equal to vdp minus sdt plus summation of uh, ui dni, uh, we wrote from these two the Maxwell relation as this is del g by del p and this is del g by del t uh, and this is mu i dni. So if I take this term along with this term and write that del squared g by so del square g by del p del n i is equal to del square g by del n i del p. So del square g by del p del n i is del by del p of del g by del n i, which is del by del p of mu i. Right? This is del by del n i of del g by del p and uh, del by del n i of del g by del p and since del g by del p is v, we wrote this del v by del n i. So this actually is del v by del n i at constant t p n and that becomes the partial molar volume. So del mu by del p at constant t and constant composition is v i bar. So this is the definition that uh, we had derived. And then we took off from here to write for the pure substance that this vi bar will be replaced by a small v and uh, that is where we, that is this expression, from where we took off for the definition of fugacity as we started. So we'll now take off from this definition where vi bar is equal to del mu i by del p at constant t and n and uh, we will also use uh, this relationship that uh, vi bar is equal to uh, mu by del p and uh, also in this expression uh, we wrote uh, dg is equal to or d mu t is equal to rt d log uh, p by p and uh, so we have these three quantities that are uh, actually equal to one another. So one is this uh, dg, the second is this rt d log f, and the third is the vi dp. So uh, In this expression, if I take this VP here, I get d mu i is equal to v i d p. Okay. So that is one part of the expression. The second part of the expression is uh, emanating from the definition of fugacity, where we had written this d mu is actually equal to R T d log f. Right. So this d mu is equal to R T d log f is equal to 
V bar dP. Okay, so this d mu t here is v bar dp and the same d mu t is rtd log s. So these three quantities being equal is what we will take advantage of in defining the fugacity of a component as it exists in the mixture and then try to relate it to the fugacity of a pure substance and at reference state and then find out how to go about reducing that. So Going back to the expression where uh, V D G is equal to V P minus S U T plus summation of U I V N I. Okay, starting from I is equal to one to N. Now here we wrote this P as LG by then P. Okay. This is V at constant uh, T and N. And uh, this S minus S actually as LG by then T at constant P N. And this mu I as LG. L G by del L I constant T E N T. So from that we had actually written that um, del mu I by del P at uh, constant T e, uh, and N is equal to del P by del P, sorry, del V by del N I at constant T P and Q not equal to I, and this becomes equal to V I bar. So now if we can convert this into D mu I at constant temperature is equal to V I bar to V P. Okay, so if I integrate this uh, along an isotherm, this V D P, then I should be able to get the difference between mu I and I can make a change. So if I do this integration from uh, reference condition let's say uh, mu i star to mu i, then this will get integrated from p star to p along a constant temperature. So this integral, we will write it at dp t, just to indicate, indicate that we are integrating along, it along a constant isotherm. So what this gives me is, um, mu i minus mu i star, which is the change in, entro, change in uh, chemical potential from a reference state, is equal to uh, integral of from p star to p of p i bar. So this is one expression uh, that we would uh, have. And um, uh, because we also wrote that um, d mu t is also equal to um, t d log fi bar. Now this fi bar is actually the fugacity of um, the mixture, uh, fugacity of the component i as it exists in the mixture. Um, so unlike uh, in the case of pure substance, where we had defined, uh, defined d mu t as rt d log fi, where fi is the fugacity of the pure substance. In this case, this d mu t would be rt d log fi bar, where fi bar is the fugacity of the substance as it exists in the mixture. So 
This is not actually a partial molar property because it is not defined in the form of this del V by del Ni at uh, so it's not actually not a partial molar property defined in this form. But in another form, this is the fugacity of the substance as it exists in the mixture. So it is not the same as the fugacity of the pure substance, but when it gets into the mixture, the fugacity changes. So if I take uh, parallels between um, an ideal gas mixture and this one, so in an ideal gas mixture, the substance which is initially at a pressure, P, when it goes to uh, the mixture, it goes to Pi, which is actually equal to uh, Xi into P, okay, where Xi is a um, uh, mole fraction of uh, the substance into P. So now this uh, pressure goes, when I mix it from the pure substance property P to uh, uh, pressure as it exists in the mixture as Xip. In the same way, the substance, pure substance which has a fugacity Fi, when I mix it, it goes to a substance state which is Fi bar, which is at the fugacity as it exists in the mixture. So what I can say is in a certain sense, this uh, the fugacity of a substance as it exists in the mixture is in a particular, uh, is actually a pseudo partial pressure, okay. Uh, okay. For ideal gases, it would have been partial pressure, but uh, for uh, okay, any other substance, uh, for real gases, for example, this Fi bar would have been the pseudo partial pressure, that is, as pressure tends to zero, this Fi bar should tend to Xi. So that is the okay, thing. So your definition of fugacity of a substance as it exists in the mixture would be that in the limit as P tends to zero of Fi bar by Xi P to tend to one. So that is your basic definition of fugacity of a substance as it exists in the mixture. This, this statement along with this statement completes the definition of fugacity of a substance as it exists in the mixture. Just like in the case of pure substance, d mu t is equal to rt d log fi, where limit of uh, fi by p as uh, p tends to zero is one. This is the definition for a pure substance. In the case of a, a mixture, this is fi bar, which is the fugacity of the substance as it exists in the mixture, and xi p is the partial pressure of uh, the substance in the ideal gas limit. So in the ideal gas limit, the like, Fi bar divided by Xi bar P, this limit uh, tends to 1. Just basically, uh, this uh, Fi bar by Xi bar P, so this Fi bar tends to Xi bar P in the uh, ideal gas limit. So that is the basic definition of fugacity as it exists in the, in the mixture. So this d mu t can also be written as d g bar uh, at t. Uh, g bar is the partial molar Gibbs function. Okay. So now, uh, for if I write it for a pure substance, this is uh, small g bar. So uh, d g bar at t for a pure substance. is equal to RT P of log F substance. Okay. So this is the expression. And this is also equal to P bar P is what we had uh, written. So if I uh, subtract these two expressions from one another, you will get P of G bar uh, minus P bar constant temperature and uh, so this is Ti bar and Gi bar for work one species I at constant uh, T and uh, N K naught equal to I okay so this would actually be equal to uh, capital Vi bar which is the uh, partial molar uh, volume minus molar specific volume Vi bar to P at constant 
Okay, so this is your, uh, this one, and this again is at constant temperature and NJ vertical. Right, so this is uh, the difference that you get. So in this way, you actually relate uh, the fugacity of, um, uh, sorry, this is the, the, the chemical potential change and uh, the change in uh, this one. And now if I write it in terms of fugacity, this will be RTD log Fi bar minus RTD log F. So this actually would be equal to RT D log Fi bar divided by Fi. This is the limit at uh, constant temperature and this is equal to Ti bar minus all Bi bar. So this is the expression that you get. So if uh, I can integrate this from a reference state to the final state, just like I was showing the integration here, where that reference state is uh, close to the ideal gas limit, and this then can be integrated from zero pressure to the current pressure, then it actually gives you a relationship through which the value of Fi bar can be physically quantified. So if I write this, uh, T into log of, if I have integrated this from Fi bar divided by Fi bar star, okay, which is basically the, um, Fi bar by Fi, this is at the final state, and uh, So uh, at the final state, it is pi bar divided by pi minus, at the reference state, it is pi bar star divided by pi star. So the numerator is uh, that of the fugacity of the uh, species I as it exists in the mixture at the current state uh, uh, Tp. And this is the fugacity of the same substance, uh, pure substance, at the same temperature and pressure. And here, this is at the reference state. So if the reference state is uh, at a pressure which is close to the ideal gas limit at the same temperature, so then this is Fi bar will be the fugacity of uh, the same substance I at pressure P star, which is at the reference state, and uh, T, which is uh, the same temperature. Okay divided by same substance at the pure state. So this is at T P and this is T P star. So the same temperature but reference pressure P. So this is at this pressure and temperature and this is this pressure and temperature. So now this is equal to integral from P star to P of P i bar minus P i bar D P along an isotherm T. So this is the expression that uh, you get. Now, if in the ideal gas limit, I say that uh, uh, Fi bar star tends to Xip and Fi star tends to P, because uh, pure substance fugacity tends to uh, P, and uh, mixture fugacity, the mixture complexity of fugacity tends to the partial pressure, then this Fi star by Fi star, and the Fi, star, Fi bar star by Fi star will actually be Xip divided by P, which would actually tend to Xi. So this term will actually become Xi. So this is Fi bar minus, uh, Fi bar by Fi minus Xi. So this uh, log of, okay, sorry, this minus log of this. Okay, so if I uh, do this, then log of this, like a log of Xi bar, if I go here, then it becomes Xi Fi. So this actually becomes equal to RT, B, uh, sorry, RT log of Fi bar divided by Xi. So this is your uh, new definition. So if 
I know the mole, fra mole fraction of the substance and fugacity of the substance uh, Fi at pressure T and uh, temperature uh, pressure P and temperature T. And uh, if I can actually measure the change in volume due to mixing at this given temperature, starting from a limit of pressure which is in the ideal gas limit to the current pressure. So if I uh, can make measurements of uh, the change in volume due to mixing at all of these uh, pressures at that temperature, then this quantity can be integrated. So I can determine the Fi bar quantity. So the Fi bar will be the only unknown. If all of this can be measured, then I can evaluate Fi bar. So this is uh, the expression that uh, we get. And uh, once I can measure uh, Fi bar, then from there, I can evaluate all the other uh, properties, just like I did using uh, chemical potential. So uh, we all know that um, once Fi bar is known, all states, then we can actually get uh, E mu T, which is uh, E T bar T, which is equal to uh, R T to E log the basic definition which we started. So we can actually say mu at any given state minus mu star at the reference state. We get the obtained using differentiating, okay, integrating this RT log of Fi bar by uh, okay, Fi is the expression that I would so if this is the state as it exists in the mixture and this is the uh, limit at the ideal gas limit of the pure substance, then this would be the So if I know this quantity, uh, which will be uh, something like, this, this will actually be Xip, then I'll be able to get uh, mu i minus mu i star. So if I can evaluate the pure, the pure substance chemical potential at the ideal gas limit, so this quantity is known, so this quantity can be obtained by just doing this. So this is the way uh, mu i can be obtained. And uh, uh, bi uh, basically is obtained by differentiating this with respect to uh, pressure. And uh, minus si is obtained by differentiating this with respect to temperature because uh, those are the expressions that we had uh, shown here at Eg by dp and dp dp. So with this, we can actually get d mu i by dp is v i bar, and in the same way, d mu i by dt is minus s i bar. Okay, by using so differentiating with respect to temperature and pressure, we get v i and s i. And once this is available, and this is basically g i bar. So once g i bar is known, g i bar uh, plus t s i bar. Would actually give me H i bar. Okay, so once this is known and this is known, then I'll be able to get H i. And once H i is known, uh, H i minus uh, P V i would actually give me U i, which I can determine because V i is known from here and T and P are known quantities, so I can get U i. And similarly, now A i is U minus T s. So AI is UI, AI bar B equal to UI bar minus T SI bar. So I can calculate. So all of these properties can, can be evaluated once FI bar is known at all the states. And that can be obtained by measuring the change in volume from uh, mixing from uh, any reference. And you may measure it at all pressures starting from the ideal gas limit to the given pressure and integrating it along an isotherm. So this basically requires that over the entire state space of temperatures and pressures that are relevant, we'll need to be able to measure the uh, okay, entire enthalpy of mixing uh, of a given substance.
maintaining the composition temperature and pressures constant than just varying one of the constituents, keeping all the other composite constituents of the composition constant, and do that for every constituent. So that's actually a very painstaking and reasonably infinite number of measurements. But if that is done, then you can evaluate all of this. So the theory is ready, but in practice, this kind of measurement that we are talking about is not going to be easy or is not going to be a straightforward uh, option. So in uh, such a case, we will uh, eventually need to resort to simplifications of uh, uh, this law for more practical use and more uh, concurrent, uh, more, more convenient calculations. Otherwise, uh, yes, if we can make those infinite number of measurements, then theoretically it is possible to generally state the properties of any mixture constituent as it exists in the mixture. But that is an uphill task and cannot be done for all mixtures, for all temperatures and pressures and property constituents. So normally we uh, take recourse to approximations wherever is feasible. So one approximation we had already looked at when we started with this is the ideal gas mixtures. where the pure constituents, behave as ideal gas, and mixture behaves as ideal mixture. What does this mean? This means that each gas obeys PV is equal to RT. And this says uh, VI bar minus VI bar to zero. So, or the change in any external property VI bar minus VI bar is zero. So, enthalpy doesn't change, entropy doesn't change internal energy doesn't change on mixing. So this is one, uh, what, do, what I would say is the simplest behaved and easiest to calculate mixtures. We had then looked at ideal mixture of real gases. So this would be the pure constituents are real gases, okay, which obey uh, Van der Waals equation of state or Red Lake Kuang equation of state or whatever, or PV is equal to Z. This is the law that they obey. And the mixture this idea. Okay, so this is the second uh, level of approximation where the substances, individual substances behave like real gases and the mixture behaves ideal which basically means that Bi bar minus Bi bar, that is the partial molar property is the same as the molar specific property. There is no change due to mixing in internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, whatever. So that is uh, ideal mixture of real gases. The third uh, so thing that we look at is an ideal, when the constituents are not gases, we call it a solution. This basically means that the constituents, the pure substances, could be solids or liquids. Okay. And in the uh, other case, it could be gases also. So we normally distinguish the gas mixtures from the other solutions by this term, that this is called solution, this is called mixture. But the term ideal solution actually encompasses gases as well in some sense. Right? So ideal solution, where the pure substance can be solids, liquids, or gases, but the mixture is ideal. That is, there is no change due to mixing, in which case 
your vi bar minus vi bar is equal to zero, and uh, we know that this vi bar minus vi bar is um, defined as uh, is equal to r t log f i bar star. Sorry, f i bar f i bar divided by F i, where F i is the pure substance uh, fugacity, and F i bar is the fugacity of the substance as it exists in the mixture. So uh, now this is uh, zero. Sorry, this is um, we had said this is F i y i. Sorry, x i. We just derived that this v i bar minus v i bar. Um, why did we do that? Right. So we did this. Uh, v i bar minus v i bar uh, is uh, R T into um, yeah. So since v i bar minus v i bar is zero, this integral is zero, which will be then R T log f i bar by x i f i is equal to zero, which basically then makes that. Since this is zero, the RT is anyway non-zero, so uh, this has to be zero. So FI bar is equal to XI pi for ideal solutions. Okay. And this is called the uh, Lewis Randall rule. Okay. So all ideal solutions actually obey the Lewis Randall rule, which says that Fi bar, which is the fugacity of a substance as it exists in the mixture, is equal to Xi to Fi of the pure substance. So I can evaluate the fugacity of a substance as it exists in the mixture simply by multiplying the fugacity of the pure substance at the same state by Xi. So that is the Lewis Randall rule. So uh, using the Lewis Randall rule, I should be able to define the fugacity. And um, um, so in uh, ideal solutions, if I want to uh, evaluate the chemical potential, which is basically uh, uh, C mu i, so chemical potential, in ideal, ideal solutions. Since uh, d mu t is equal to r t e of log the bar, so if I integrate this along an isotherm from mu i not okay, which is a reference state of the solution. This is equal to this is just like for ideal gas mixtures, we integrate it from a reference state, which is the ideal gas state. Okay, the otherwise this would have been a real gas. No, no, this is because they are not necessarily gases. You state you evaluate the chemical potential at any given temperature and pressure with reference to the same temperature, but P naught, which is a reference pressure. So that is the uh, change that you would get. This is RT into um, log of Fi bar divided by Fi naught. Okay, so this is your uh, basic. Uh, so. And now if uh, I call this ratio as uh, AI is equal to Fi bar by Fi naught, where um, Fi bar is the fugacity of the substance at temperature and pressure of T and P at the given composition in the mixture, and Fi naught is the fugacity of the pure substance I at the reference state zero. Now, according to uh, uh, look at this expression, then I'll be able to write mu I is equal to mu I naught plus uh, 
R T log of J. So this is your uh, general expression, and this uh, I can write because this mu i naught is for a pure substance. I can actually also write it as G i naught plus R T log of Okay, so this is your this one. So mu i is the uh, fugacity of the constituent as it exists in the mixture at state uh, temperature T P and the given composition, and that is equal to mu i naught, which is the uh, temperature at temperature T and pressure P naught, the property, the chemical potential of the substance at T and P naught in the same uh, the pure substance, plus the R T log A i, where A i is a Activity defined as this. So this AI is called the activity. Constituent I as it exists in the mixture. So this is the thing. And if I apply the Lewis Randall rule, Then the activity AI in the ideal solution would actually become this FI bar would become XI FI divided by FI. Right? So this um, is the change. So if I substitute that here, then for an ideal substance, mu I for an ideal uh, uh, constituent and ideal solution would be mu i naught plus t log of x i f i so this is your uh, difference for an ideal solution and then this can be actually expanded as mu i naught plus this x i f i by f i naught i will be able to write it in terms of the fugacity coefficients so r t log of so let us say f i divided by P, which is at the given pressure. So I multiply and divide by uh, P by P ref. So this is Fi by P. Then I can say uh, P over uh, into Xi into P divided by Xi into P by P ref to P ref by okay. So this Fi by P and this Fi naught by P ref not Fi naught by P ref these can be obtained from the fugacity chart for general generalized fugacity chart for any any given substance. And if the temperature pressure and the critical temperature and pressure of that substance are known, then from the fugacity chart, I'll be able to read this Fi by P and Fi naught by uh, P ref. And this Xi P by P ref can directly be evaluated. And therefore, I should be able to get the value of uh, any substance uh, chemical potential at a uh, given temperature and pressure. Okay? So this Fi by P and Fi naught by P ref uh, can be obtained from the fugacity chart. And XIP PPRF can be calculated, therefore this quantity is evaluable. Okay. So that is how you calculate for ideal solutions. Um, in the extreme limit of ideal gas mixtures, when this ideal solution is actually a mixture of ideal gas mixture, then this um, uh, Fi by P uh, actually becomes, uh, you know, Fi itself becomes XIP and uh, so uh, this Fi naught also becomes because this actually the entire thing eventually reduces to uh, Xip by P ref because these two quantities eventually get cancelled with each other and you get only Xip by P ref. So that's for an ideal gas. So this is where we'll uh, close the topic of uh, multi-component uh, systems that. Um, in the most general case, the ideal gas mixtures, so the, the, the so mixtures result in the change in extensive properties due to mixing. And uh, for such substances, the states can be evaluated only when we can actually measure 
the change in volume uh, due to change in each individual constituent over the entire ranges of temperatures, pressures, and compositions. And since this is an uphill task and not possible for all substances, so for uh, uh, substances for which it is required, one needs to go about doing that. But uh, uh, we can actually take limits of uh, ideal solutions. Uh, ideal solution limit can be taken when the solution is reasonably dilute in the sense that one of the constituents um, is in large excess and all the other constituents are in very small uh, quantities. So then you can apply the ideal solution limit. Um, it can also be applied to ideal uh, mixtures of real gases and ideal gases. And uh, in all these cases, we can actually neglect the changes in uh, properties due to mixing. And therefore, we'll be able to evaluate the uh, properties more easily. And in the cases where the properties do change uh, with mixing to a substantial extent, then we will need to evaluate uh, those properties by extensive measurement of changes in volume over the entire ranges, the entire range of temperatures, pressures. Okay. So with that, we'll close the discussion on <coughs> the discussion on sorry, the discussion on uh, multi-component systems. In the next class, we'll actually talk about the applications of the chemical potential and fugacity to equilibrium processes. And uh, as a, a case study of that, we would discuss phase equilibrium, that is, let us say, solid liquid phase, liquid gas phase, or even Im among solids, for example, you might have seen in uh, uh, material material science that you have, for example, for steels, you have the austenite, martensite, and the ferrite on various stages. So these are all phases. So change from one phase to the other is governed by the same kind of phase change rules like you get uh, you get for water changing phase from um, liquid phase to gas phase or solid phase to liquid phase. So we'll understand the general concept of phase change and phase equilibrium in terms of the chemical potential and fugacity. And we'll also discuss chemical equilibrium when reactions take place in forward and backward directions and eventually go to equilibrium. How do we discuss the chemical equilibrium? How do you define the condition for equilibrium is what we'll be looking at. So we'll talk about equilibria, conditions for equilibria, and as special cases of that or as examples of that, we'll look at phase and chemical equilibrium. This is what we'll be doing in the coming few uh, lectures. For this lecture, we'll close here, uh, saying that that is the end of the topic on multi-component systems.